it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. You know why I like Wednesdays? Because I get a chance to just come and tell the world something that blessed me in hopes that it'll give you hope and that it blesses you too. So hi everyone, I'm Kristen. Please subscribe so you can know whenever I post a video. I'm really and truly only post those that I felt led by my spirit too in hopes that it probably encourages you and rejuvenates your spirit as much as it does to mine. So I was reading this week from the book of Genesis 26, in particular verses 12 to 33. And that's really where we're gonna take it from. But I know in this day and age, we don't want to spend too much time sitting watching a video so i'm going to do it real quick in 10 minutes or less so what it, what would your spirit do if i told you there's room for you what's going to be different for you does anything leap because my spirit did when i heard it what does that mean there's room for you well from genesis 26 verses 12 to 33 actually we'll stop before 33 um actually we could stop at around 28 yeah 28 is fine okay so just to give you a little synopsis um because i know we all read our bible every day right <laughs> so if you didn't you know it's real simple you just go on your phone or you get a book from your grandmother's house or if you have one inside your house that is just not open on psalm 91 then please do read it i promise you it is literally going to rejuvenate and help you throughout this very trying time that we're going through right so um abraham has a son and his name is isaac now abraham as most of us already know is a extremely wealthy guy because he made a covenant with God and God really promised that he will be prosperous and just like there are generational curses there are also generational blessings so Isaac being Abraham's son and by the way the Bible reminds us that we are a seed of Abraham once we accept Jesus Christ so if God promised Abraham and his seeds to be prosperous hello what does that make us prosperous and that doesn't necessarily mean that my bank account is overflowing because baby it ain't right now but prosperous or wealthy could mean more than money we're going to go into that one day okay because i'm really going through some journeys right now where i'm learning that a lot of my blessings um is not necessarily how the world tell you it's gonna look but child honey i be blessed okay all right so isaac naturally most likely because his father already left an inheritance for him was also blessed but we see the bible saying in verse 12 that isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold so that's really a covenant and a blessing so yes isaac was clearly keeping up um you know being industrious being a hard worker etc really sowing and tilling the land whether you want to see that in a natural realm or even at a deeper level that's fine but the bible said that the lord blessed him all right and this was a covenant that god kept okay that that went on to um abraham's son isaac period and it's the same with us the blessings that we are acquiring now you know that can be passed on to our generation so what we are doing this investment that we are you know investing in our relationship with christ it actually can be transferred for many generations to come so you know this is such a one just to invest in knowing who god is and to having a close relationship with him not only just changes your life but it change it could change the entire trajectory of your lineage talk about legacy baby okay so anyway they said the man began to prosper and he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. You hear much I mean hear the word prosperous? Basically, he was real blessed. That's, that's what we're getting from this particular Bible verse. And as you know, with every mountain top, there's a valley below. So, a spirit of envy came amongst the Philistine people. Now, this is this happens to us in our very life you know we work really hard or we inherit something simply because we are blessed by the most high and there might be family members co-workers or simply strangers who are envious and jealous 
two different things by the way but who become envious of your blessing or envious of your inheritance okay no god doesn't promise you that because he gives you an inheritance there's not gonna be a downside to it the downside sometimes is betrayals envy you know all those fruits of sin okay he didn't promise you that that's not gonna happen okay so we see that happening in this rep i actually researched the word envy and we said that envy is anger turned inward for something that someone has like status possessions power or wealth so the philistines became very very envious and you know what was the result of that well basically they was like we don't really want you here no more please leave have several seats thank you and back in those days wells were a necessity because that's where they would get water for the for the persons and for their livestock right and wells were very expensive and it was very time consuming to dig a well so do you could you know what these people do they blocked up the wells so basically they're making it uncomfortable for you or making it hard for you to thrive in that particular space so Isaac could have sit down and fuss and talk about, you know, these are the wells I would dug by my father Abraham. So that's basically my inheritance, you stopping up and stuff to fight. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. What he did is he took up his Georgie bundle, as we say in the Caribbean, and he moved towards Gerard. All right. So as he was going towards um, Gerard, because, you know, they basically ch chased him away. Go from here, actually hear what he said, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. It don't get more plain than that. Move, we don't want you here. So Isaac departed from the, and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah. For me, the word valley was very interesting there. Every time I see the word valley, for me spiritually, I see it as a sunken place, but a place where there's a lot of growth and learning occurring, all right? So when he went to the valley of Gerah, now there were herdsmen who were also there, and the philistines were still nearby and um he found a well and they start to quarrel he found the next well and they start to quarrel so the bible actually tells us that there were three wells that he found in that particular valley one is isek which means contention because it literally the name literally meant what was happening at that present time then there was sitna which means opposition but there was a third well ha 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 and that's the well that we are going to be drinking from this well was called rehoboth rehoboth and this well meant roominess there was room because it was a little further away from his enemies further away from the philistines there wasn't as much quarrel about this is ours this is our land and uh, oh don't touch our water and the bible actually said that it was a it was running water so all right you block up what my forefathers left as part of our inheritance so that i can't thrive there you chase me out of that land I go to I, I, I go further away I found one well you quarrel I find the next well you quarrel now notice how Isaac is maintaining his school the whole time and now I and and when he found the third well it was called Rehoboth and this is the line that shook me up it says and he moved from there that's when he found the second well and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it so he called its name Rehoboth because he said, for now, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. I am here today to tell anybody who is madly in love with Jesus at this time, okay, that there's room for you. There's room for me. There's room for us. Yeah? Now, we are, as humans, are like wells. Some of us, we've been privileged um, to belong to families that have already started to deposit good seeds 
you know about who Christ is and you know having a better relation with him, relationship with him not religious not going to church every Sunday to get communion no and I'm not saying those things are not important I'm talking about a personal int like deep intimacy with Christ all right but as you can see it doesn't necessarily come easy to get to that point sometimes there's a process sometimes there's disappointment heartbreaks near-death experiences in order for you to really dig deep and really get to that level of faith and commitment to Christ are you a well yeah have you dug up all that there's in the, that, that there's within you I know I'm trying but I know there's a lot more inside of me not because of my will but because there's a spirit living in me and it's the same for you if you've accepted Christ as your living Lord and Savior and if you haven't time's running out so simply ask at this time God forgive me of my sins I am going to try I repent of my sins I accept you as my Lord and Savior take me into your loving arms amen easy as one two three I promise you life is gonna be hard but it'll be worth it so why I love this verse is because we see that Isaac was predisposed to be blessed just like Christ's children we are predisposed to blessings because we are part of Abraham's seed because we are seed of Jesus Christ but it doesn't mean that there won't be Philistines it doesn't mean that there won't be envy it doesn't mean that there won't be persons who hate us simply because we are blessed and sometimes it means that you're gonna have to move literally and figuratively and spiritually move from certain realms to get what is yours but sometimes God allows it so that you could find your true well your Rehoboth I'm on my journey to my Rehoboth and I know I'm closer and closer each and every day and that's what I want for you I want you to know that there's room there's room for you to be blessed I'm not talking about you know having money or having a huge house I'm not talking about that I'm talking about true blessings health prosperity kindness joy or doesn't that get you as excited as if I told you you just got a million dollars house and if it doesn't you need to ask yourself why if we claim to be spiritually minded I want you to know that there's room for you we live in a world where having a personal relationship with Christ could make you seem awkward could make you see like a misfit when really and truly that's the real place to fit in that's the real area the real realm you want to belong to because the end is near and I'm not saying it in a place of fear but that's the reality our time is running out and we really and truly need to get back to God if we're not there I want us to dig up our wells it may be there have been a lot of life situations that have caused your well to be blocked up mm. let's dig in let's commit to the process of Christ and really really enjoy who we are in him there's room for you in God's kingdom there's work to be done. Do you see the mass murders? Do you see the mass killings? Do you see the tragic, horrific accidents that we are seeing soaring all over the regions of the world? Do you see the, the, the spate in massive deaths as a result of this pandemic? We had two volcanoes, one in Iceland, one in um, St. Vincent erupting at the same time, both violently for days at a time. We are seeing signs and wonders. We just came through the lungs of the earth, the Amazon burning up, burning up, literally. The signs are there, people. Are we looking? Or is it because it doesn't look like what the TV tells us it would look like? Ask God for discerning eyes. It's happening right in front of our eyes. And if he does come in the morning, are you ready? Are you ready? It's not enough that you go to church. 
It's not enough that you try to be good. You need to be in relationship with Christ. So there's room for you in his kingdom. There's room for you in every area of your life. I want you today, if you feel as if you are trying to work on a ministry or do something that you know God has called you to do, but in your heart you're feeling God probably gave you a business idea and you're saying, oh, so many people have this already. So many people have a closed door. So many people have this, but God specifically it or probably write a book about a topic that has already had thousands of books written on it. And God is saying, no, I want you to write this one. That's actually happening to me right now. And you say, oh, somebody there's already one. If I tell you there's room for you. Do what God tells you to do. God needs more workers in his vineyard. I am not someone to sit in front of a camera and do what I'm doing. You know, I don't have the first clue about it. But I was called to do it and I'm going to just listen. There are thousands and millions of videos posted every day. And maybe only two people might see it or one. But that's enough. You're worth that for me. You're worth my lunchtime in work. Instead of eating and seeing patients and sitting here doing this. But not my will, but his will be done. There's room for you. There's room for me. That does something to me every time I hear it. There's room for me. So, this week as you go out, remember that I don't care if the world is oversaturated. I don't care if you think certain aspects of ministry is oversaturated. I don't care if you think a business idea is oversaturated. There's room for you. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are special in the eyes of God. And there are wells inside of you. Wells of wisdom. Wells. Is it stopped up by the negative sides of life? Are you willing to open them up? Or are you willing to move out of a comfortable place into a new place to find your Rehobu? I want to take you along on my journey. I'm journeying towards my Rehobu. Remember, if it's the only thing you remember today, is that in God's kingdom, there's room for you. When it comes to his blessings, there's room for you. Have a great day. I love y'all. Remember, I love you, but God loves you more. And I'm always, always, always happy to say his words.